Hey y'all, I'm Carolina Tony. Today the road brings me back to, where am I at? Blackberry, Kentucky. I am in Blackberry, Kentucky. Now I have been here before and have showed you where and how and why what we know all about the Hatfield and McCoy feud. I have been corrected. There are a lot of things I got wrong. There are a lot of things that a lot of people get wrong. And when we find things that are wrong, what do we do? We try to straighten them out, of course. So today, I've got my good buddy here, Fred McCoy. And Fred is not only McCoy, he's also got hat blood, fat Hatfield blood running through his veins. So we are going to get the real story from the horse's mouth. You're not saying you look like a horse. <laughs> but we'll get started right after this station. Identification. Well, a lot of folks think that this cabin that we see right here, this is where the famous hog trials took place. Now, this is not the actual cabin, but this cabin has been reproduced to look exactly like the other cabin that sat on this foundation. That's correct. The few really didn't start with the hog trials. No, a lot of people over the years, they want it to for commercialization and history, the story, to make the story more dramatic. They always wanted to say that the feud started over the hog theft or the love affair, like a Romeo and Juliet thing. The Hatfield-McCoy feud actually started over the Civil War. And of course, Civil War was from 61 to 65, but in 63, that's when Deb Lance Hatfield from West Virginia and Randall McCoy right up the road uh, over the hill here uh, they both were Confederate, and in the heat of battle, Devil Lance Hatfield up and deserted. And when he deserted, they what was left in that unit uh, was either killed or taken prisoner of war. Now, my great-great-grandfather, Uriah McCoy, was also taken prisoner of war and shot. So uh, that's where the hard feelings begin between Randall McCoy and Devil Lance Hatfield. And then at the end of the the Civil War, of course, uh, January of 1865, right up the road here, uh, they, they have a and Jim Vance killed uh, Randall McCoy's brother, Asa Herman McCoy. Now, Asa Herman McCoy was a, a Union soldier, mm -hmm. and a lot of people want to, I've heard authors, and they say, well, Kentucky was uh, McCoy's, West Virginia was Hatfield's, Kentucky was Union, West Virginia was Confederate, and that's not true. Kentucky was actually a border state. They were both Confederate and Union here in this area. In fact, right where you're looking now, Preacher Ann's Hatfield, my great-great-grandfather on my Hatfield side, he was actually with the Union Army. He belonged to the Union. The majority of people in Kentucky were Union, but if you'll read some of the books that historians or so-called historians have wrote they want to say that uh, this was confederate area this was not this was more union area than uh, it was confederate mm -hmm. and um, but that's what started the feud was the civil war and the hard feelings between randall and devil ants when devil ants deserted now that was 1863 1865 in 1878 that's when floyd hatfield stole randall mccoy's pig and Preacher Ants here was the justice of the peace in this area. And Preacher Ants was a minister, he, and he was a, a peace uh, maker he, between everybody, Hatfields, McCoys. He actually baptized Randall and Sarah McCoy. He, he married my great-grandmother, which was his daughter, Nancy. He married her and Asa McCoy together, uh, right here in, this, in, in the original cabin, not in this one. But. So... Um, Preacher Ants, when Randall McCoy brought charges against Floyd Hatfield for stealing his pig, Preacher Ants had this big idea that he was going to keep peace between everybody. So he got six Hatfields and six McCoys to sit on the jury. And you can imagine the size of that cabin, what it was like in there with uh, a jury of 12 and then all the bystanders that wanted to see what was going on. Um, Preacher Ants' thinking was, I've got six Hatfields, six McCoys, They'll all vote for their families. It'll be a hung jury. It won't be on him. He didn't have to make the decision. The jury made it. Uh, what he didn't count on is Bill Staten coming in, and, and Bill Staten 
which is kin to the Hatfields, uh, saying that uh, it was Hog Floyd's uh, pig. And he didn't count on Selkirk McCoy, who worked for Devil Lance Hatfield, who was married into the Hatfield family, jumping ship and voting with the Hatfields. In the end, they voted that the uh, uh, Hog Still and Floyd was innocent. So, after that, a couple of years later, uh, a couple of the McCoys was out hunting. Bill Staten, the witness, was out hunting or in the woods. They run up on each other some way, and there was another shooting where uh, two of Randall's nephews, one of them was shot, and the other one shot and killed Bill Staten. So, uh, he was killed. Uh, 1882, this was also the, the election ground right in this area. And right there behind you is over there on the other side of that creek, over there in that shady spot, is where all the men would gather and drink moonshine and sit around and talk and carry on. During the 1882 election, um, Bad Elias Hatfield, which is my great great uncle. Now, what kind of election was this? This was just a general election. Uh -huh. And actually, uh, Preacher Ants was running for a re election for uh, uh, Justice of the Peace and uh, some of the local community here. Now what you had, you had Devil Ants Hatfield from West Virginia, had nothing to do with Kentucky, but him and his family, the other Hatfields, they're cousins of Preacher Ants. You had Preacher Ants and the Devil Ants, that's how they distinguished them. Both their names was Anderson Hatfield. But the Hatfields from West Virginia came over here to a Kentucky election. They were wanting to influence the election, uh, ever, uh, get the election. Everybody wants people in office that's related or kin to them or can, can help them. What happened here, they all got drinking moonshine. Um, Bad Elias, which was Preacher Ants' brother and my great-great-uncle, uh, him and Tolbert McCoy, a son of Randall McCoy's, got into an argument over some money that uh, Elias owed for a fiddle. They got into a fist fight. Tolbert McCoy got the better of Bad Elias. Bad Elias goes and sits down beside of a tree, out of breath, all of them. They're tired. They've been fighting. They're drunk. Ellison Hatfield stands up and says, try that on me. Now, the newspaper stories that we've got in our museum down there, one of them says that Ellison pulled the first knife. But when he stabbed at uh, Bad Elias, the knife, it was a pocket knife, and it closed. Closed and cut his fingers, he threw it down, and they went to fighting. Uh, Ellison Hatfield got the better of Tolbert McCoy. He got him on the ground, was taking a rock, and was hitting him in the head. Two, uh, two more of his brothers jumped in, and uh, they stabbed him, and they shot him. Now, here's where your story changes, or you've got to throw some common sense in here. You've got Hatfields, West Virginia and Kentucky Hatfields all over this area. It was a picnic. It was a, a celebration at the election ground. They used it for that also. And they try to say that the McCoy boys stabbed Ellis and Hatfield anywhere from 27 times to 50 times. Now tell me, does it make sense to you for a bunch of your relations to see three men, or three, three boys, two men and a boy, jump in on somebody and start fighting? Three on one, and none of your family jumps in or breaks it up. And then they stand there and watch them stab somebody. The Hatfields of West Virginia Hatfields have always talked about how many times the McCoys stabbed the Hatfields. 27 times, they say. And there's been some as far out, like I said, as 50. But um, 27 is the magic number. But the Hatfields stood there and watched somebody stab their family, a uh, member of their family, 27 times. I don't buy it. So that's basically what happened in this area here. You've got your uh, pig trial and you had your election day fight. Now after the election day fight, we're going to go in a minute to the pawpaw trees. After they stabbed and shot Ellison, then uh, we'll fill you in at the next location on what happened there. Now, something I found kind of interesting. We have one person named Devil and we've got another one named Bad. So what's that, that's just not a good mix. Well, you brought up a good point. You had one named Devil, uh -huh. and you had one named Preacher. Yeah. Preacher Ants was actually an ordained minister. Well, that fits. 
and so that fits him. And yeah. the other one, they say he got his nickname when he was a kid. His mother said he was mean as the devil. He mm -hmm. was always mischievous. Now, if you listen to the West Virginia Hatfields, they say, oh, he, he got his nickname Devil Ants. From, he, he killed a, a whole company of Union soldiers one time. A, a company of Union soldiers is 100 soldiers by himself, and he deserted within three months of joining but you brought up a good point. You said bad lies, and yeah. there was a, a bad lies, yeah. but there was also, that was on Preacher Ants' brother. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Devil Ants also had a brother named Good Elias. <laughs> and that's how people distinguished people in this area because we all name people. My dad's name was Bobby McCoy. My son's name, Bobby McCoy. My what? grandmother was Ella Jane McCoy. Our daughter's name is Ella Jane McCoy. People in this area, it's... Uh, show respect or love you name your children well children. i've got to throw this in okay we had a good we had a bad was there anybody ugly oh i'm sure because we could have had a good a bad or ugly hey, I come and from hey, that could be where the whole movie <laughs> came from so with this little area right here this, this right in here, so right in here even the, uh, was another cabin there was a small cabin a one-room cabin and there was a well out here uh -huh. Now, there was also a well, that's a barbecue grill yeah. there, but there was another well here that they had, a little small well, and there was another well out front, Tony, uh -huh. and um, I'll show you a wash basin up here in a minute on the cemetery that Preacher Ants used to have out here in his front yard, and when people would come off this hill, or this was the crossroads, if you look here at this tee, yeah. and when they'd come, they'd stop by here, and they could wash their hands, he had fresh water there from the wash their hands in a wash basin and cool off and things like that so he was just well liked by by everybody preacher ants hatfield was So that reef is just put in a box above the headstone to, to help preserve it. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Yeah, a lot of people has it, and uh, back here's one behind it. Mm -hmm. Another one up there. There's a little, little house for, let's see what's in that. Yeah, a reef, and there's some little mementos down below. Preacher Ants Hatfield. Uh huh. And Polly Hatfield, his wife. Right. This is the one that lived in the uh, in the cabin exactly. that we just left. And the cabin's just right over the hill, there, right, uh, from where we're at now. And that's Preacher Ants and Polly. And here I was telling you about the well being out front. Of course, there was a well, small well out back mm -hmm. for my uh, great grandparents. But this was the well, uh, the wash basin that was out front, and uh, beside of. Uh, preacher answers well right and this is where people would come by and they was welcome to uh they put their water in there and put their cork there and wash their hands uh -huh. or, or whatever or for the workers or whoever just to have a place to wash up so they carved this thing Out from of yeah but you can look and see how big it was and then they carved it down yeah now this was made by uncle bob hatfield correct uh whatever or, that says or what it says out of my yeah we can not we really don't have any documentation no, on I that i don't want to say nothing that's uh exactly but that's what that uh plaque says and i have no reason if i had a reason to argue with it i, I wouldn't care to speak up yeah but i have no knowledge well that's so. the whole point of this video that's is not. is everything that we're going to talk about in this video we're going to try to keep straight we're going we can document and while you're saying that let me make one correction while uh -huh. we were down there earlier at the cabin my wife said listening to me that i said that uh ellison pulled his knife on uh bad lies no, it was Bad Lice and Tolbert that was fighting. Ellison pulled his knife on Tolbert McCoy. Okay. So if I said that, I was incorrect in okay. speaking too fast. But Yes, so Preacher Ants and his wife is buried here yeah. in the cabin. I'll show you. We are high up on a hill, and it's right down there in the bottom, and it looks like it may be two or 300 foot down. And for the life of me, now, when it is not uh, trees and leaves up here, uh -huh. you can see the you can cemetery, see it. and you can see the cabin from up here. One thing we don't get in the video is how high up this graveyard is. Okay. 
here's the old monument here. Uh huh. But this is Ephraim Hatfield. Yeah. This is he, he was known as Eph of all. This is the man that brought the uh, Hatfield family from Virginia and West Virginia uh, to Kentucky, and uh, Eph was uh, was known as the Eph of all. And there's Annie McKinney. That's uh, Preacher Anne Hatfield's um, mother. And uh, that's where that, that family there came from. And uh, uh, we're going to... So this is basically how the half, the man that brought the Hatfields to Kentucky. Yeah, and, and uh, a, um, Annie, of course, was George Hatfield's mother. I'm sorry right. about that. Man, preacher aunts come from George. But what I was going to say, when we go to West Virginia after a while to the Hatfield Cemetery, you'll see a, another Ephraim. And he was known as Big Eve. And Big Eve was Devil Lance's dad. Uh -huh. and that was his father. And uh, so, again, that's where sometimes the names confuse yeah. people. When we started filming for this episode, I did not have any intentions of having to put it in two parts. But because of all the valuable information, I think it's going to be necessary. You are going to want to for sure tune in to part two. We meet some pretty interesting people. Uh, actually, stars from a reality TV show. So you're going to be sure want to catch that. I want to thank Fred and Sheila McCoy for showing us around West Virginia and Kentucky, the feuding sites, and also sharing with us the real truth. Be sure to catch part two. If you enjoy this video, be sure to give us a big old thumbs up. Be sure to share with your family and friends, but until next time, y'all have a good day.